Believe it or not, every day, most of us touch or check our phones more than 2,000 times and spend more than three hours a day staring at our screens. Fear of missing out and the culture of constant interruptions and distractions is part of everyday life. But a new book, Stolen Focus, by journalist and best-selling author Johan Hari, insists it doesn't have to be that way. And he joins us now in the studio. Yeah. Johan, thanks so much for joining hey, us. Hey, Noah, great to be with you. Now, I have to say, when I was reading your book, I found it quite comforting to know that I'm not the only one that's struggling with distractions and focus. Yeah, this is exactly why I wrote the book. I noticed that for me, with each year that passed, things that require deep focus that are so important to me, like reading books, having proper long conversations, watching films, were getting more like kind of running up a down escalator. Do you know what I mean? I could still do them, but they were getting harder and harder. And I was particularly worried about the young people in my life who, you know, I could see were, you know, whirring at the speed of Snapchat a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to get to the bottom of, you know, what's happening here, because the figures are quite shocking. You know, the average office worker now focuses on any one task for only three minutes. For every one child who was identified with serious attention problems when I was a kid, when I was seven, there's now 100 children who've been identified with that problem. So to get to the bottom of this, I went, I interviewed over 200 of the leading scientists in the world who've studied attention and focus. And what I learned is exactly what you said, that it's not your fault, it's not my fault, it's not your kid's fault, it's not there's something wrong with us. There's scientific evidence for 12 factors that can make your attention better or can make your attention worse. They include some aspects of our tech, they go way beyond them. The food we eat is really harming our ability to focus. The way our schools work is harming our kids' ability to focus. But the key thing to understand is exactly what you're saying, it's not your fault. This isn't some flaw in you or us. Mm -hmm. And when you really understand what these 12 factors are, we can begin to get our attention back. We feel a, a whole lot better based on that. So <laughs> let's talk about how we can uh, correct the situation or at least try to correct the situation. Well, the reason it's so important is I would say to anyone watching, think about anything you've ever achieved in your life that you're proud of, right? Whether it's starting a business, being a good parent, learning to play the guitar, whatever it is. That thing that you're proud of required a huge amount of sustained focus and attention. And when your ability to pay attention breaks down, your ability to solve your problems breaks down, your ability to achieve your goals breaks down, which is why it's so important that we tackle these 12 different causes. So I'll give you an example of one of them and what we can do about it, if that's OK. Yes. So I went to MIT to interview one of the leading neuroscientists in the world, a man named Professor Earl Miller. And he said to me, look, there's one thing you've got to understand about the human brain more than anything else. You can only think about one or two things at a time. That's it. This is just a fundamental limitation of the human brain. But we've convinced ourselves that the average teenager believes they can follow six or seven forms of media at the same time. Right? There's going to be people watching this while tweeting and doing everything. Yeah, yeah. And so what happens is scientists like Professor Miller get people into labs and they get them to think they're doing more than one thing at a time. And what they discover is you start to screw up everything you do. You make far more mistakes. You remember less of what you do. You're much less creative. In fact, in the short term, being chronically interrupted is twice as bad for your intelligence as getting stoned. You'd be better off smoking a spliff for your intelligence than you would just being constantly interrupted all the time. So for all of the 12 factors that I write about in my book, Stolen Focus, that are harming our attention, there's kind of two levels at which we've got to tackle them. I think of them as defense and offense. There are loads of things that we can do to defend ourselves and our children. I go give dozens of examples in the book. I'll give you an example of one. I've got something at home called a K-safe, right? Uh, it's a plastic safe. You take off the lid, you put in your phone, you put on the lid, you turn the dial, and it locks your phone away for anything between five minutes and a whole day, right? Everyone with children, the number of parents I know who yell at their kids to get off their phone while staring at their phones, I would say, everyone, have an hour a day where all of you put your phones in the phone jail and you just have a moment of just respite for yeah. this. When you start to get those moments of attention, you realise how pleasurable it is to be able to focus. So that's the defence. But I want to be really honest with people. I'm passionately in favour of these individual changes. They'll make a big difference. But at the moment, it's almost like someone is pouring itching powder over us all day and then leaning forward and going, you know what, mate, uh, you might want to learn how to meditate, then you wouldn't scratch so much, right? And you want to go, well, I'll learn to meditate, but you need to stop pouring itching powder on me. So we've got to also have some bigger social and political changes that actually take on the forces that are doing this to us. And that can sound a bit fancy, but I went to places that are doing that, from France to New Zealand. I talk about how we could do that in Australia. So I think we've got to do both. We've got to defend ourselves and our children. A lot of my book is about our kids. Yes. But we've also got to take on the forces that are doing this to us and our children. The book is called Stolen Focus, 
because our focus is being stolen from us by some really big forces and we've got to take them on. I thought it was really interesting in your book you say that you don't think it's a coincidence that the crisis in paying attention has taken place at the same time as the worst crisis of democracy since the 1930s. How do you draw that connection? Yeah, this is, I think, a really important element of the... the it's not just that our individual attention is being destroyed, our collective attention is being destroyed. In order to achieve anything as an individual, you have to be able to pay attention. But to achieve anything as a society, to come together, you've got to be able to pay attention as a society. We've got to be able to think clearly about things. We've got to be able to distinguish lies from the truth. We've got to be able to sustain pressure on our leaders for long periods of time. So it's a really big... It's not a coincidence that we're in this mode now where we just scream at each other all the time, we can't listen. There's lots of reasons for that, but one of them, this, this crisis in attention is a disaster for our children, it's a disaster for us in our individual lives, and it's a disaster for us as a society. But I absolutely believe we can put this right. When you understand the 12 factors that are driving it, these are relatively recent changes, right? They're not, we can remember the time before them, um, but it requires a real shift in mindset. We need to stop blaming ourselves and our kids and acting like there's something wrong with us and realize, you know, we are not medieval peasants begging at the court of King Zuckerberg for a few little crumbs of attention from his table. We are the free citizens of democracies and we own our own minds. And together we can take them back from the forces that are stealing I, them. I love it and I love the idea of that's safe, but there'd be a riot in my house. It's, it's, <laughs> it's try about, it. Honestly, it's, I know, I know I, I'm with you, but it's about extracting said devices from teenage fingers. Yeah. Where things could horribly I've go been wrong. there, but honestly, once they're craving attention too. They won't tell you, but at some level, they're not happy with this way that we're living either. Yep. And starting to get those little spaces back, when you get them, it's a real battle at first, yes. but once you start to get those spaces and they get some actual attention, that's much right. more intoxicating than whatever crap they're looking at on okay. TikTok, yeah, right? I'll put your experiment into practice over the weekend. Excellent. Let me know how it goes. Good stuff. <laughs> Thanks so Cheers. much. Thanks, Thank John. you. Thank you.